Good morning and welcome to Gulfstream Park on this picture perfect Sunday afternoon. It is a fast track, firm turf course. Brian Natto and Samantha Perry with you as we uh, look back on another incredible day of racing here in South Florida, Fountain of Youth Day. Brian, of course, we'll get to it a little bit later, yep. but uh, an interesting day to say the least, but a fun one. Yeah, without a doubt, nine stakes, eight of them graded 14, culminating with the Fountain of Youth door knock. Uh, workmanlike in, in, in winning um, didn't need to dazzle anyone in his first start of the year and first start since uh, early December so yep. he is uh, onward and upward and all things considered he's essentially in the Kentucky Derby yeah it's it's cool uh, the full to me yeah how about that uh, yeah it's pretty pretty neat so Puka will be a sought after dam. Is that is, is he just her second full too I, I don't know I That's think so I feel like remarkable yeah. Uh, but anyways, today, wow, what a day we have. I'm excited for this. Yeah. Of course, yesterday was so exciting, but today is the day to pull off those rubber bands on the bankroll. Maybe not so much <coughs> you, uh, but it's a mandatory Rainbow yeah. Six, Brian. This thing will be huge, and what a betting card we've got. Yeah, so I, I looked uh, earlier this morning. The carryover is about $850,000 or so, give or take. So, um I, I have eight to ten million in mind. I, I really feel like they're going to fire big on yeah, this, I and, think so too. and I think also we remember what happened last time we did this when there were three winning tickets at one point eight million dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. I feel like that resonates, and I feel it like does. that's going to really get some more people involved, and uh, it's going to be massive. We all have tickets. Ronnie will be with me for the opener, and we have his ticket as well, of course, and Samantha and I put some together as well. It's an interesting sequence that we'll get to in a second in that I, I do feel like you can have a couple strong opinions, yeah. and then maybe Lean you can blanket some, some races. Yep. Yeah. Well, Speaking of tickets, you've got early pick five. Let's get in the first half of this card so we can really dive into yep. the last six. Um, I had to whittle this down. This was a hundred and twenty dollar early pick five, and I, I cut it to sixty because this is difficult. And the cool thing about this early pick five and early pick four is it ends before the rainbow. So let's hit this thing, and yep. then we'll have some bankroll money. You can see the single in race two, Builder Jack. That is a tricky race. A lot of people are gonna go deeper than that in there for sure. In race number three, the top pick is the six, Grand Journey. In race number four, I am four deep in a tricky maiden special weight turf sprint. The five, Crash the Gate. Lay six for Mike Maker. And in race number five, the one, Boomin Bell. Might get loose on the stretch for Mark Cassie. And that is a $60 early pick five ticket. And that'll be a massive pool as well, by the way. Race number one, maiden, $25,000 claimers. Three-year-olds, a mile and a 16th on the turf course. The rails are at 59 feet for this race today. We just scratch out the AEs and the one on top for you, a mortal line for Safi. Yeah, it's a post position play for me. Uh, we're set down inside. We're going to save all the ground. Safi's also got the two. I, th I would assume the one will be a little better price. Ken Ramsey, first time gelding. Yep. I know you like that. The blinkers. Safi's throwing everything here now. First time gelding, second time Lasix. Blinkers going on. Yep. We're going to try the turf. First time for Safi and first time on the turf in a maiden claimer. Maybe we get some improvement. Today. Yeah, the dam was very, very quick on mm -hmm. the grass. Uh, the 11 you just have in your mix. I, I, I've just, I've tried this horse a few times. He's oh, an yeah. Ohio bred. I, I'm excited to see this horse back on the grass. You've got him lower, but you mentioned uh, the post position could yeah. be a problem. And you've got the other Safi runner. This horse is certainly yeah. a player. I think speed control on the drop now, drop it in half. It's not ideal, but that's supposed to wake him up in theory. Race number two. It's an early pick four here. Uh, Brian will tweet out that ticket. It's a mile and a 16th, made in 12-5 level. The three builder, Jack Antonio Sano. This is his kind of race. Yeah, and this horse had a real trip last time. Antonio's had a good week down here. Yeah. Uh, won the opener three days in a row. This, this horse never was able to get out last time. And when finally, when he did, he galloped out really, really nicely. Yeah. Let's just get clean running today, and we'll see where we stand. Uh, the two Peyton's Day, another horse that's a player getting back to the Tapita. The races on the Tapita, although beaten some big margins, they fit in this field. Oh, absolutely. And they were made in special weight races, too. So I think that's going to wake them yeah. up. Modern Lane is certainly in the mix. Steve Badu very quietly does a good job off the claim. He's three yes. for nine. I, I didn't. I don't know. Maybe they bet this horse. He was six to five last time, but Jose D'Angelo will see is you know not the trainer anymore. We'll see. Yeah, that will be interesting. But yeah. it's a good uh, trainer switch there. He is so. 
proficient in that move. Race three, it's a claiming $12,500 level. A mile and a 16th on the Tapita. The six for you and I both. The number five, the North Remembers, comes out for Fred yep. LeBeau. I, this horse, to me, like, this horse has got to win. I almost made this horse my best bet. Yeah. Being fruit, but. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Marty's got to win with this horse already. Yep. And now if you want to take him, you go right ahead. But we're heck to pay in here at 9 to 5 on the line. There's other alternatives, but he's clearly, clearly getting back. Now, he's never run on the Tapita here. No, but he has had a start yes. here, and that I feel like just helps within itself. Yeah. And it's a it's a solid drop. Marty Drexler, he's just winning races left and right. Yep. Infamous covert, a horse was taken from Marty Drexler yeah. last time for Billy Threnos. Yeah, Billy does good off the claim, and so maybe he wakes this horse up a little bit. This horse is fine to begin with. He does have a start here at Gulfstream Park, and I don't think cutting back a little bit is going to hurt him either. No, and old Pound Green, you finally got him in your top four now. Well, he's rolling now, he right? Is. I don't know he's why. I have no idea, but he's rolling now, and he's going to try to win three in a row on Tapita. It's uh, very impressive. Race four, five furlongs on the Tapita track. 59 feet here for the rail yep. settings, uh, so this is going to be, you're going to have to have some speed in a race like this. The two comes out. Uh, the 13 does draw in. The 14 and 15 are out. We haven't heard yet on the 16, but we will let you know. I'm going to presume the 16 will come out. He needs a scratch to get in, put it yes, that way. Yes, exactly. Yep. So, race four, the five on top for you. Crash the gate, Mike Maker, back on the grass. Back on the grass and now with Lasix. I think that's yep. the big deal here. This is a really an impossible race. It's going to be unfortunate. But it's right in the middle of the picks. Uh, yeah. You'll be able to look at them at least and give some insight to everybody. Um, this is a tricky, tricky race. There's a couple firsters in here that could be live. There's others in here that could be sneaky. I just took at least, if nothing else, a proven horse. You got him in the mix too. I do, yes. I think this horse is going to just move up quite a bit here. Edgar Zayas had a beautiful win for Mike Maker mm -hmm. yesterday on the grass. Uh, the three for me, uh, this horse travels really well on the grass. He's just a big cold. I think this is a horse that will pick up some ground late, although I'm not running to the windows on the horse. It's one of two trainees for Cassie, yeah. and I found a stat for Cassie. This is first time out with turf sprints, so this pertains to the four. Four for 40, first time out turf sprints. This is the last five years. This mm -hmm. isn't that great. Not that great. No, I try to fade him a little bit in yeah. these spots. Uh, this is a tricky horse. Uh, he was 6-1 to one at Keeneland in his only start in October on the dirt, and he was beating a football field dead last. I made him 12 on the line. If he's, if he's being bet today, I think that's significant. So I think this is definitely one to pay attention to yeah. um, because he didn't show anything, and now he's kind of that newcomer that yeah. reappears and with Lasix, by the way. A uh, bonus move coming out of an extremely fast race yeah. of a uh, born noble. Big City might be a maiden for a while, mm -hmm. I think, after yesterday's performance. This horse has got speed to get out and clear. Yeah, and, and I, I have always said this. The dam was 0 for 9 on turf, mm -hmm. but turf sprints to me – are so much different than turf routes when I'm t when you're talking about good dirt horses. Yeah. Um, so bonus move on a very fast and firm turf course out there today. I I, I think they can not handle it and still win. Agreed. As Completely. opposed to running two turns when you it really ha it. yeah exactly. I, I could not agree more. Yeah. Uh, this horse runs really fast numbers on the dirt, and that's the only thing that concerns me. Mm -hmm. But you you say especially the way that this turf course yeah. tends to play. Race five, a mile and the 16th on the Tapita track here. These are for Phillies, uh, three-year-olds and up. It is a clean race of eight here. The one on top yep. for you, Boomin Bell from Mark Cassie. Yeah, I think Tyler can just break running here and yep. set the pace. I don't see any speed in here. Um, Tyler Gaffleon, one of the security guards, alerted me to this yesterday. Uh, Tyler Gaffleon r rode in all 14 races yesterday. Oh, my God. That is remarkable. That's a lot. I was blown away. Wow. I, I looked. I, I don't believe anybody else did because of some scratches and things like that. Yeah. He rode in every race yesterday. I, I, that blew my mind. That's a lot. You were a jockey. That's like That's I was tired just sitting up here talking yeah. and I didn't even do every race exactly well you had one off so My that was remarkable You're, so yeah I that's yeah you these, golf club these guys are athletes too and he yep. does it with a smile on his face and uh yes. he had a good day yesterday. he did have a good day yep. but that I, that needs to be noted because I, I, I couldn't believe that yeah that's that's a lot mm -hmm. that's a very busy day uh so yeah the one I, I I agree with you that horse will have a shot the eight Ashima this horse two wins in a row now this horse Philly is just 
Yeah. She's zooming. She's zooming. And, you know, here's the tricky thing about the torpedo. You and I talk about this all the time. She's zooming, but she's, like, no faster than anybody else, really. Yeah. And she's going to be bet. And, you know, like, your top pick has got the same figure, if you believe in him, after she lost, you know, relatively comfortably. Roscoe Village is good. Yeah. Um, these are tricky, tricky races. They are. They are indeed. But it, the thing about the enticing sunset race is I felt like it was a bit speed favoring yeah. that day. Mm -hmm. And this horse, I don't know if you have a note on that, but Ross, I felt like there was only one horse that day that – Yes, there were eight Tapita races that day. There were two track records. Everything that was near on or near the front held. This is a horse to elevate. Yep. Exactly, because of things like this. It's hard sometimes to get a gauge on the Tapita, but when there are days that are significant like that, Brian and I really try hard yep. to, to point it out, and that was one of them because I was completely against Roscoe Village that day. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's Rainbow Six time. Mandatory payout today. It will be millions in that pool. All three of us, Ron, Brian, and I have tickets. We'll be right back with you in just a moment. past performances with one best-in-class product you now get all three past performance formats easily switch between views access the most trusted information in horse racing with DRF all access past performances go to DRF.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today Welcome back to Goldstream today. Brian Natto and Samantha Perry with you as we uh, dig into this 11 race card, a mandatory Rainbow Six today. It's going to be a huge payout. All three of us have tickets. I'll let you start, Brian, yep. and you can do yours and then Ron's, and then we'll go to me. Well, my best <laughs> bet is in this race. Okay, so that's good. So we're going to single right off the Perfect. bat. We're going to single a horse that was short last time, and I would assume moves forward in a big way. The spreads, you can see them here. Race 7, massive late, yeah. kind of sort of late scratch of the three. Bedazzle them. Huge. I had her in second. She was going to be the favorite. I scratched. No, I always had Neat Trick on top. So let's Danny Gargan second out, I think, moves forward. I like the Roswell race. Might be probably now going to be a short favorite with Sedona, a steam horse, but... We'll put her a little bit further down. Race number eight, too deep. I, I, I don't really think they're going to beat Run for the Hills, but I'm going to use Wide West on the comeback because she's got speed. In race number nine, uh, there's the six. I, Cacciatore, I just think, is down the road against a group stuck in neutral. He looks like he's going places. I have no idea where the race came from. I'm going to believe in it. If you don't, then you're probably using everybody in there. He and was I get, trying the dirt for yeah, the first time. I, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Sir London is my long shot, I think. Is it your long shot, too, or uh, a horse you picked? A horse I picked, yes. Yep, that's the three in race 10. And in race number 11, hopefully we are all still alive. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, I lost two key picks, and I scratch in – to the seven, Talonade, first time lay six for Graham Motion off the layoff. Again, I scratch into that horse. We'll take a look at Ronnie's yep. ticket. We'll see if it's the playbook play. Oh, oh Ronnie, feel right. I like it. I love it. Yeah, look at this now. He's going to go four deep in the opener. So Ronnie's single, he's going to be out here to talk about it a little later on. Uh, Ronnie's single is in race number 10, and that is Scramble. I'm going to assume that's his best bet of the day, and that is a bold one, and that is. is a great race. To have a best bet. It really is. It's a, such a competitive mm -hmm. sequence. We'll take a look at mine. Uh, I win on the, the oh, price here. Uh, throw a blanket at this race. Race number seven became tricky with me with Bedazzle. I'm out. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to look at these horses beforehand. For late pick five, we'll be able to look at it. But the six Sedona on top, and then I have Reliable Lady as well. Race number eight, the three on top for me, Ivory Moon. I'm going to bring this horse right back. Race number nine, I've got the one Ensign Parker on top. I was going to single this horse. Cacciatore did run a big race, but I'll get into why a little bit later, why I'm a bit hesitant. Race Race 10, the three on top for me, Sir London, and in race number 11, just too deep for me, Missoula on top for Christophe Clement on the grass. $128, this is a, a, a 
something that I'm going for today. Uh, race six, when we can take a look at them, maybe we can knock some <coughs> off a uh, mile on the grass here. It's a very competitive field. We're on the inner rails for this race here. You've got Party On Girl. And let's show the replay yeah. here because uh, there are a few horses coming out of this race, which, by the way, was a very good race. Well, Delahaye is going to win significant yes. stakes races. This, and she's just galloping around here, okay? And I think she was your best bet, and, and uh, she wins for fun. Now, Party On Girl, I don't want to say they weren't trying, but this was just let's get going, start our year. Yep. She could be okay. She hadn't run since June. You're going to see her here, just kind of not really getting a very good trip either yeah um and then it was just like okay we'll just get them next time yeah and next it, time's today. yeah you see the the mike dub silks there it was just kind of a, a little bit of a hand <coughs> ride just shaking the reins our dotsy the 10 ran really well in mm -hmm. this spot for vicky oliver and this horse was coming off a layoff and i thought that that was important here in this race you see party on girl on the rail there was such a big separation there between kind of the rest of the field but like you said about delahay that's a strong race if you believe in it yeah. uh we've got both mm -hmm. of those in the mix the nine as well for you euphema this is an interesting one well she's got speed she does there's a lot of horses <coughs> coming out of the swoop to finish race mm -hmm. i didn't really like that I race like i like the race, race we showed you yes. way better I i'm against all those horses agreed it's another reason why I have a best bet in here. It's another reason why I'm singling. She was 72 to 1 that day. Yeah, she's way too fast on the, the dirt to <coughs> be, I, I feel like. Race 7, it's a late pick 5. This is good for me because I can look at these horses uh, prior to. This is my ticket without seeing the horses, uh, at least the ones uh, that I haven't seen on XBTV. We'll show that ticket. Uh, I am just going to single here with Sedona. It's a $24 ticket for me. I might add more uh, after seeing these uh, horses, and the rest of it is just a run back of the pick six. A $24 play. Scratch the two and the three from this maiden special weight event for Phillies here. And this is a race to me that it changes a lot now that we've got some race experience out of this. You're on the five neat trick. Yeah, I. It. I'm not going to say I'm against Sedona, but I figured today would be a good day to try to beat her. Uh, neat trick ran pretty good on debut. Danny Gargan's not a guy that's going to crank him up, you know, to, right. to get going. Uh, Roswell was good. Roswell ran fast. Roswell came back to run a good second against winners. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> they bet Neat trick a little bit. She's a good magic. We know what they're doing. And, and I just think now stretching out a little bit today with a recency edge and a race over the, what will be a huge favorite, good enough for me. Uh, for me, I, I made this point when she debuted that she worked nine and four at that sale. She was the fastest good magic to work and she only sold for 150. Mm -hmm. That concerned me when I saw her. Uh, she had pastern boots on, which these are these boots that they put on their, their back legs and horses that uh, sometimes are not correct. They hit themselves. It'd be like us hitting our ankles. I don't like when horses are like that. And then adding to the big bag of tricks that this filly has. Her last work was with Dornick, and she literally got ran over by Dornick. That's hard for a filly. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Like, it's, yeah. She, uh, like, Dornick just put her. I got to, you. Like, it was just, yeah. So, I, that's just that. Yeah. Yeah. I think she, she ran fast. She did, though. She did, yeah. No, no one in here has run remotely fast. Right. And then Sedona, of course, well, you're, you're related to, the, it's the full brother for full sister first, to first captain. Yeah. They paid two million for Sedona. Yeah, and this horse here is uh, she's a filly, and they tend to be more precocious in the male. So mm -hmm. yeah, I listen. She's probably going to be three to five with the scratches in yeah. here now. Um, it, it's it's West Point and Woodford. They they hammer their horses. Um, I don't know. Maybe America needed like nine nine miles to get going. That's so the, the dam. So yeah. I don't know. Could, I agree. I'm I'm hesitantly putting. I scratch it yeah. at six. I do. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, race eight, it's a late pick four. Do you want to show it? or do you Yeah, we can, it's just a run back of the okay. of the rainbow. I'll tweet it out. We'll uh, it's a tropical turf pick three. We'll just show it really mm -hmm. quickly here. Uh, this is a fun bet. Mm -hmm. I've, I'm really keen on it. You see the race 10 for me is a spread race there. It's a $48 play. It paid good yesterday for yeah, what came it. in. Yeah, I did hit it. It was a $30 ticket. I think it paid 80 or so bucks. That's not bad at all. We'll take it. Race eight, we do scratch the number six Owens tour guide. A field of 10 will go to post here. And the seven run for the hills. Let's watch this replay. Now, a couple of things going on with this replay here. 
Ivory Moon did not break at all, and that is the four. But watch this move from Run from the Hills, and I'll let you talk about it. This was, woof. Yeah, I don't see the source losing today. Yeah. I mean, she was so good in this spot, and she's not going to be back there in this spot either. Uh, Futures now just ran off the screen and ran everybody off their feet. Mm -hmm. um, I think it put a lot of horses, yours included, uh, uh, you know, pedal to the metal under the gun. Um, this was a big time effort. Now she's backed it up twice in a row. She's run very well. Fulminate two back. I don't know why, but she's good again. Yes. And uh, she found her speed again. Um, I think uh, she's a. I added the 11 just because my ticket was so light, but you could single run for the hills to me. I don't she, like your horse at all. The rails were at <laughs> 80 feet in that race. Yeah. They, they, that was the only day they've been 80 right. feet. That was. She was literally 20 wide yeah. if you were on the inner rail right. that day. So that she just had so much ground loss. It's not even funny. Uh, the three, like I mentioned, the Ivory Moon. I'm just I'm going to just forgive that race. Maybe it was a recovery line for her that day. And I'm just going to come back to her again. But I am going to use the seven as well. Race nine, late pick three, seven furlongs on the fast main track. These are state breads here. It's a field of eight. It's a competitive one as well. Well, Cacciatore, first time on the yeah. dirt. Imagine that and one big time. One big time and not, not in for a tag or anything like that today. Yeah. Don't have to worry about that. I know we're stepping up, to, but Ronald Coy has done some good things. The post is perfect. Um, maybe he bounces. I don't know. But if you just look at that race and you say it all the time, trying something new, mm -hmm. I think you had him that day too. Yeah. Um, there ain't nobody in here that's going to be Cacciatore if he runs that race back. No, he ran like 10 points faster yeah. than he ever has on the sheets. I'm not a huge fan of the works coming into this mm -hmm. race, specifically the 47 and one from the gate. Now, I'm not a trainer. Uh, I couldn't do it, probably. Big headache. But uh, there are some horses that can be tricky. I, mean, I can find out the story here, but I just I don't like that gate work. I wonder mm -hmm. if it took some starch out of him. I wanted to show the replay of Ensign, Ensign Parker because – this was a lot worse than just breaking oh, yeah. out Maybe here. They're off, you lose. So, but watch this. So he breaks. Thank you guys. All right, he dwelt there, and boom, he goes out. But when you watch the pan of this race, he, I mean, it was way worse. And they were, he was just behind the eight ball. You don't do that. So watch it from here too, because he takes a hard dart. Boop. Yeah. Uh, you can't win like that. He he was the only one to make up some ground. Well, right, and he didn't want to be there. That's no, not, so he's always had speed. Exactly, and he tried like heck. Oh, yeah. He Look makes a big move here, and he obviously he pays the price for it late. Paco's under the gun here. There's nothing he can do. He's no. got to get in the race. Um, if he breaks today, he is definitely a, a, a player. I just thought there's just a lot of speed in this race, and Paco's probably going to send him along. Yeah, that's there. true. I, I hope maybe he'll just pop mm -hmm. the field there. The rest of them are kind of just uh, so, so players, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Catton was in the other day, and he scratched out. Now he's in for 20, so yeah. I don't really know what to make of that. And he's gelded. He's, he, gelded. he's one that, you know, Ralph Nix, he, he can bring him back yeah. well off a layoff, so he might be a – a sneaky player, an uh, underneath player. Now, race 10, a mile on the grass course here. Uh, it's a very competitive allowance optional claiming. Race your long shot, my top pick, the number three, Sir London. Yeah, this is an all race if you can get, if you yeah. can afford it. Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Uh, first time gelding, layoff. Graham is good with this kind of stuff. 18% off this kind of middling layoff. We haven't seen him since mid-October. He's got speed if he need to use it. He's drawn well to be inside. This is a trip race. We saw several of them yesterday where horses just didn't get through or got bogged yeah. down on the inside. Um, this is a luck race, too. Let's just be perfectly honest yes the horse that's probably the luckiest is going to win because there's going to be a lot of traffic in here it, there is uh, let's pull the replay up of Frito and American Diamond Frito by the way this horse the race against quality G is looking real good I guess he's good for some reason for I don't quality know G has now won three races mm -hmm. this meet uh, Frito does his thing on the front end here he's going to go to the lead and he's going to play come and catch me if there's a horse on the grounds that deserves a win more than Fredo, I'm not sure I know who it is. He, this poor guy just runs his eyeballs out every time, and he catches one or two that run a little better. He always does all the dirty work, too, yeah. 
on the lead. Um, the post is not ideal for him, but he's got the speed to, to negate it. He's the best horse in here. Mm -hmm. He just never he never wins. No, and he runs fast each time, and yeah. he doesn't win. So you wonder uh, when it'll stop. And he even cut back last time and mm -hmm. still and didn't. I'm not sure what the plan was with that race, to be honest, because yeah. he'd always gone to the lead and exactly. he didn't at that time. Maybe just try something different with him. Right. We've got Javier Castellano on today. Uh, I think that will make a little bit of a difference here as well. The fourth scramble. Let's talk about Ron Single because I oh, don't yeah. source bled last time out. Yeah, I don't really um, – I don't know. The source hasn't been out for a little bit, has the numbers last year that make him competitive yeah. here. Uh, you know, Barkley trains him pretty quick in the morning. Certainly looks like he's been working pretty good. Yeah, it does. And that's he's got to win here too. He does, and that, and that helps. I think you had him that day. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you did at least uh, whenever you did win here. Now, race 11, the finale. Hopefully you're alive to this point. Uh, I hope we are. Maiden special weight, it's on the grass. This is a really good race. It's a mile and an eighth here. We scratch the number two braid, the six Jessamine Hill. We scratch the 15 and the 16, 13 and 14 do draw in and the number seven on top for you. Talonade. Yeah, I, I scratch into Talonade. I do think he, she is interesting. She's got a big pedigree for the Wertheimer brothers. Homebred, Lasix returning now. Kentucky Downs race easily draw a line through that mm -hmm. the laurel race was pretty good now this is the big leagues today you know with a lot better today yeah. but maturity in an extra turn tap it and tis now in this pedigree that's not going to hurt any no it's not uh, this horse to me uh, i'm surprised she hasn't tried the gr the dirt mm -hmm. first because her full brother was ran fours mm -hmm. on the dirt uh, if you're a sheep person I, I find that kind of interesting let's pull up the replay of grayosh now, Grayosh was not the filly I wish was running in this race. I wish Suggesta was. Remember, that yeah. was Chad Brown had two in this race. Suggesta was the eight all the way out the back and galloped out past Talk a about million. Not trying. Yes, uh, <laughs> Grayosh here. Somebody had to be third. She's not much to look at. You see how little she is, uh, but she tried. And that yeah. counts for something. No, and Chad's so good with these types. You're going to get improvement today. Chad Brown, that is. They only paid $25,000 for her. Yoshida was a grade one winner on turf and dirt. He wanted to run long. Yeah. Um, she's a very handy filly. That's going to play well in a yes. race like this. That's, yeah. That's, yeah, she's like yay big yeah. here. She, she, we might be the same height. Uh, Missoula Irad gets here. I want to see this horse live. I liked her last time. They bet her a little bit too. But cross out the Tapita effort. At least she just got a race under her belt she's got a long stride uh the works on the page don't pay too much attention because she's working a lot better than i feel like mm -hmm. the the time suggests there the, as well yeah the unfortunate thing with this race is the two scratches that come out of this race were winning horses the two that come in this race are decided long shots and that means anybody we like here value is long gone yeah and, and you've got sassy princess in the mix i wasn't a huge fan of her saratoga race no, but she's just back, and she's got Lasix. Brendan won. You won with the opener there yesterday. Um, maybe she's just a little more mature. And yeah. You know, the, the, the figures, if they improve, she's going to be right. She can be right there with this group. It's such a competitive late mm -hmm. card and competitive pick six. It's all dirt, all turf, endless pick six and pick five and pick four. Those are the late ones. Mm -hmm. uh, exciting day, but let's take a look back uh, as we're about to dig into the mandatory day. Let's take a look back on yesterday, Brian. Yeah, what a huge day, culminating, of course, with the uh, – well, here's the mandatory. Yeah, we'll mandatory zip through that, yep. but uh, culminating. What's the, the – stole it? Oh, uh, hello, Steel Sunshine. Oh, yeah. Steel Sunshine. Finally got one. Yep, was – had things. This was a crafty ride by Paco. Yeah. It really was. You got to tip your hat to this – to yeah, him and yeah. the horse. Bobby DeBone has done such a good job with this horse. He's been threatening to win a race like this, and uh, he finally got it done, and he got it done in the right one, too, because this is a serious race in the grade two Gulfstream Park mile. Yeah, he beat Tumbarumba right on the square. Uh -huh. No excuses for this here. It was great race riding, a very exciting day for Bobby DeBona and the team. Now, Fiona's magic. Yeah. 
What a and uh, yeah, look at that. Thanks, guys. Oh. That w it would have looked way closer on mm -hmm. the the replay than it did there. Yeah. That was it was a good good race. Uh, congratulations to those connections and Fiona's magic. Yeah, this was a big upset. Yeah, Mike Yates does a good job with these sprinting uh, middle distance fillies. Yeah. Leslie's Rose was dreadful. I gotta be. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, she's not. She was not good at all. No, I don't know why she wasn't. Uh, into Champagne, I was really hoping would mm -hmm. win it. She looked good for a little bit, but Fiona's magic just did everything thing uh, on the front end the hard way uh, that Mike Gates he's a big talker yeah we <laughs> we are uh, we are excited for Mike we no are doubt. yeah so last year he won with Dorth Vader the yeah, Devona Dale exactly. so that was uh, yeah she was a nice filly as well and then of course Dornick uh, the final race of the day did not go without uh, some drama luckily everybody was okay right. speakeasy late scratch got loose after the post parade happened Dornick about 85%, I heard Danny say, and uh, you're going to help peak him at the yeah. first Saturday in May. Yeah, this is not going to wow anybody. Didn't need to wow anybody, though. It's a good starting off point. He got mm -hmm. the job done. Um, he was one to five for a reason. Uh, I said workmanlike, and I think that's the right word, and he'll get uh, only go better from here. Hopefully we'll see him right back here in the Curl and Florida Derby. Yeah, he's a horse that he is only going to run as fast as he needs to. That's what I've kind of noticed in his, his races, bar the Sierra Leone race, and right. that Sierra Leone race has really come back to be oh, really a key yep. key race. At Tropical Turf pick three today. It's a Oof, it's competitive, 8, 10, and 11, 15% takeout. Brian, a fun bet to get involved yeah, with. Yeah, without a doubt, 8, 10, and 11 today. And then, of course, the coast-to-coast -coast coming up as well between us and Santa Anita. Yeah. That'll go a little later. They have a big huge cap day today. big cap day out there, a huge car. You can see it there. Our last two, three over there. Uh, so that's a lot of excitement as well. And uh, my best bet, it starts the Rainbow Six. So. All right, mm -hmm. good. Good luck to you there. Mm -hmm. uh, my best bet scratched. My long shot. Uh, well, it's your long shot first. Sorry. Yeah, it's Graham. Oh, and, uh, thanks, oh, guys. There you, go. you guys are quick. Um, it's in the grass race. And you got yep. Graham. I got Graham in the mandatory rainbow. So that'll get going a little later on. Race number six. Pete's upstairs. We'll send it to him. We'll be back for the opener shortly.